Our final investment appraisal technique is to look at net present value. I mean, here's a question for you. Would you like me to give you £400 now or £1,000 in five years' time? And as you think about that decision, you're probably thinking about, well, how much could I invest that at? You know, if I invested it at uh, 5%, you know, would, would, would £1,000 in five years be more or less? You're also thinking about, will I know this guy in five years' time? Will I be able to collect my money? You're thinking about the risks of investment. You're also thinking about, do I need £400 now? Am I short of cash now? that £1,000 in five years is a far better option. To look at this another way, if we wanted £1,000 in a year's time, we'd only actually have to invest £909 now if we had 10% interest rates to get £1,000 in a year's time. So we're saying that the present value of £1,000 in one year at 10%, the present value is £909. Now we can calculate the present value for any particular amount at any investment rate for any number of years using this equation. But don't worry, you don't have to remember this equation because the figures will be given to you in some sort of table. Using this table, we can look at the different investment rates, 10%, 12%, 14%, over the different number of years, and we can get the discount factors. So my example was that a thousand pounds at 10% in one year is worth 909. And we can see that the factor at 10% for one year is 0 0.909. So we take whatever uh, value we have coming in in one year at 10% and we multiply it by 0 0.909 to get our present value. Tables like this would be provided in seminar questions or exam questions to help you establish the correct discount factor. For those of you who are interested, here's the Excel equations that I used pr to produce those discount tables. So let's look at an example. Uh, we've got a project with a five-year life. Um, we're going to invest in this project. It's going to have income in years one, two, three, four, and five. But we're going to discount the value of the profit that's coming in so we can do a net present value. The start year, the current year, is today. So we have today's value of money. So the discount factor for now, for the start, is always going to be one. So in this project, we're going to invest £100,000 now. And the forecast is that we're going to make profit of £30,000 in year one, £30,000 a year two, £40,000 year three, and then £50,000 in year four and year five. But we have to multiply those values by the discount factor. So the £30,000 we're anticipating to get in year one has only got a present value at today's value of money of £27,000. And in year two, the discount factor is 0 0.826. So the £30,000 we're getting in year two is only really worth at present value £24,700. Now, the money going out is negative. So the £100,000 we've invested in the project today at a discount factor of one is negative £100,000. And then we look at the positive present values to get the total present value or the net present value. And for this first project, the net present value is £47,000. Uh, let's have a look at project B. Project B also has an investment value of £100,000, but Project B is different. It has a, an income in year one of £40,000, in year two of £60,000, and then presumably sales fall off because in years three and year four, it goes down to £20,000, £10,000, no income, year five. Let's have a look at the discounted cash flow or the present value of those money. 
£40,000 in year one, multiply it by the 0 0.909, gives us £36,000. Multiply your year two £60,000 by the discount factor 0.826, it's only really worth £49,500. Add up your present values, subtract your initial investment, and we see that the net present value for project B, the one on the right, is £7,700. Now, any project with a net present value higher than zero is worth doing. Essentially, if it's positive, we get our money back. If the net present value is calculated at negative, we're not getting our money back. Project A has got the higher net present value, significantly higher at 47,000 against project B. But I want you just to look to see what decision you'd arrive at if you calculated the payback for project A and the payback for project B. Remember, for payback, we're doing the cumulative cash flow. Project A, we're investing £100,000. How many years until I get my £100,000 back? Well, I get 30,000 in year one, 30,000 in year two, and 40,000 in year three. I get my 100,000 pounds back in year three of a five-year project. That's not sounding so good anymore. Uh, project B, when do I get my 100,000 pounds back? I get 60,000 pounds year two, 40,000 in year one. I've got 100,000 pounds back after two years. The payback for project B is two years in a four-year project, which is halfway. Compare project A with project B. Project B has a two-year payback. Project A has a three-year payback. A company choosing payback would probably go for project B, but the net present value of project A is far higher. Payback ignores the benefits after the payback point. So that's the drawback of using payback. Any project with a net present value greater than zero is worth doing. It's going to make you money. Uh, but that doesn't mean you will do it because um, project B has a net present value of greater than zero, 7,000, but project A was much better. Now project A and project B both had investments of £100,000. How do we compare the two projects if they're different? So we can compare, uh, we can express the net present value as a percentage of the capital invested in order to compare projects that have different investment values. So what we'll do is we'll take the net present value and we'll divide it by the capital invested to get some sort of profitability index. And this will allow us to compare project A with project B if they have different investment values. So, this is a different example than before. Project A is the same, we're investing £100,000, but we found some cost savings for Project B. It's now only going to cost us £80,000. So, Project A and B cannot be directly compared. They have different investment values. We take the net present value for Project A at 47, divide it by the investment, and we get a figure of 47% as a profitability as a profitability index. When we look at project B, the net present value is improved because the project has cost us less money. When we look at the £27,000 net present value compared with the £80,000 investment, it gives us a project profitability index of 35%. So this enables us to compare projects of different investment values. Project A is still better. So net present value, it looks at the today's value, the present value of money that's been promised to you that may or may not happen some years into the future, based on a discount factor, which is calculated from a discount rate, which your organisation will tell you what discount rate to use. And the discount rate will be based on uh, investment decisions uh, and other factors concerns with the business that your company is involved in.